I hear that bell ringing, that means neighbors are at my door. Well, I'm going to whip up a fabulous casual meal that they're all going to adore. So let's get cooking. Jazzy, you're going to be healthy with the Jazzy Vegetarian. Jazzy so snazzy. We're going to cook something healthy and light. Should it do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. Jazzy, so snazzy. So join me in the kitchen right now. We're gonna cook something healthy and like That's right. Sharing supper with neighbors can be casual and fun with this stress-free menu plan. First up, the satisfying taste of mushrooms stands front and center with my delectable walnut stuffed mushrooms. And then on the side, oven roasted butternut squash with garlic. And then next up, spinach with garbanzo beans and caramelized onion adds a pop of color and a delicious taste. Light and lovely lemon cake rounds out this simple supper menu. So let's get cooking. Roasted butternut squash with garlic. This is a recipe from my cookbook, and I just love it. It's really easy to prepare. You can just take off the peel with a little carrot peeler. You see, it just comes right off like that. All you need to do after you peel the squash, you want to cut the top off like this. There you go. And you see, this part doesn't have any seeds in it. So you can just slice it again, slice it again, and start making your cubes. But this part actually has seeds in it. So you want to split it down the middle. And see, that goes pretty easily. And there you open up. That's what the inside of a butternut squash looks like. Now you can cut it like this and take out the seeds in the cavity and stuff it with some nice stuffing. You can also cube it up like I've done today and steam it and then uh, whirl it up in your blender, make a nice butternut squash soup. But tonight the way I'm making it is my husband's favorite way to have it and that is when it's roasted in the oven with some fabulous garlic. And then what I do is I just take a grapefruit spoon. You know how I love grapefruit spoons. You just roll it around there and it kind of cuts those seeds right out of there. Very easy to clean. So that is how you prepare the squash. I have one medium butternut squash, which I have peeled, seeded, and cubed. And then I've sliced up about eight large cloves of garlic. Just toss that right over the top. Mm-mm, good. Let me grab a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. That's really all we're going to need to spice this up. About a half a teaspoon of sea salt and an abundance of freshly ground pepper. Now you don't need much olive oil with this. Just about a teaspoon or two. Yep, that's about it. Let's see how that goes. Toss it all together. Make sure all those cubes are coated. That is how easy this is. And I've prepped a baking sheet with some unbleached parchment paper. And we're just going to dump the squash right on there and spread it out in an even layer so it bakes evenly. Now I've preheated my oven to 375. And we're gonna roast it for, oh, about 45 to 55 minutes until it gets all caramely and golden. It's really gonna make a great side dish for my stuffed mushrooms. All right, that's it. My fabulous roasted butternut squash with garlic is gonna pop right into the oven now. And next up, let's get our dessert going. My lovely lemon cake, mmm. would lovely lemon cake be without lemons? And in fact, this lovely lemon cake has just a hint of lemon in it. It's kind of a back taste. It's really, really delicate. Really good, too. And it's very quick to whip together. And I'm squeezing about two tablespoons to start with of fresh lemon juice. And I'm just going to set that aside to use later on in the recipe. So let's put our dry ingredients together. We're going to start off with two cups of whole wheat flour. We have two teaspoons of baking powder, one teaspoon of baking soda. I've gotten 
getting a lot of emails about why to use baking soda in a recipe. Now, here's the scoop. In this recipe, because baking soda reacts to acid and there's an acid base in that lemon juice, what's going to happen? You'll see when I put the lemon juice in at the end, the whole batter is just going to puff up and it's going to make this cake nice and light and fluffy. So that's a great jazzy tip. So the next thing we're going to do is half a teaspoon of sea salt. So no need to sift this. Just take your whisk and whisk. Okie dokie. Next, something to sweeten it with. And today I'm using one cup of maple sugar. That maple sugar really is going to add a nice under flavor, a real mapley taste. Now what would lemon cake be without a little lemon zest? And I'm just going to zest whole lemon. Let me just chop it up a little bit. Got my board. Get that out of the way. And then just chop that zest up nice and fine so it distributes nice and evenly throughout. Scrape that right in there. Let's stir that zest in there so it's all incorporated. Now what I have is a half a cup of vegan margarine, which I have melted. And vegan margarine is really easy to find in your supermarket these days. For some reason, your supermarket manager does not carry vegan margarine. Ask him, oh my goodness, margarine's popping all over the place. All right, let's get that off right away. So the liquid that I'm going to be putting in, one and a half cups of sweetened vanilla non-dairy milk. We're going to kind of work quickly now. Going to get that vegan margarine all in there. Let's stir that all together. I see the cake is a little loose, so I'm going to add just a little bit more flour to this. So today I used two cups of whole wheat flour plus two tablespoons. And that is the consistency that you want right there. Here is the magic to this lemon cake. I'm going to add the lemon juice. Just two tablespoons. And as you stir that lemon juice in, you're going to see that batter immediately start to bubble up. That's that baking soda working with the acid of your lemon. It's going to make this cake so light and so fluffy. You won't believe it's vegan. I've got my oven at 375, and it's going to bake for about 40 minutes or so. Just tap out those air bubbles, and there it is, my lovely lemon cake, ready to go in the oven. And next up, the star of the show today is my fabulous stuffed mushrooms. First, I just take a large baking sheet and I have cleaned six large portobello mushrooms and I've stemmed them and you're going to put them top side down. We're just going to pop out the stem of this mushroom. Just take that stem very firmly between your thumb and your forefinger. Pop it right out. Perfect. But you want to give them a little taste. We're going to dress up these gills a little bit with a little bit of tamari. A half teaspoon of tamari. And you're just going to spread that right over the gills of the mushroom. Alrighty, while I make my stuffing, we're just going to let that tamari soak into the gills of our portobello mushrooms. I'm going to start off with four slices of whole grain sprouted bread. You can use any whole grain bread that you like, and you can even use a gluten-free bread. But I find the sprouted bread works really well. It helps to hold the stuffing together in these portobello mushrooms. What are we going to flavor it with? Well, first off, I've got one cup of chopped walnuts. And then next up, for a little flavor, a half teaspoon garlic powder. And then two teaspoons of Italian herbs. You can use all-purpose seasoning if you like that flavor better. Two teaspoons of dried basil. Let her rip. And you just want to grind it until it's coarse crumbs like this. Because it's a really rustic stuffing. All right. Now I want to add 
about two teaspoons of olive oil. Get that olive oil all incorporated. All right, that is it. Okay, but this is a great basic stuffing that you can use for these portobello mushrooms. But you know what? You can also use this for zucchini squash. You could use it if you were stuffing butternut squash. Any kind of vegetables that you want to stuff. This is real tasty. All right. Mushrooms. Now I grab a spoon and I'm basically going to put about a sixth of this stuffing into each portobello mushroom. Let me divide it up first. Good. Now what you're going to do is you're just going to kind of mold it. I'll just show you like this. See? Press that stuffing right into the mushroom going to get all crispy and really give a great taste to your mushroom. I got to tell you, these are such big mushrooms. I'm just going to make five today. I think I got the biggest mushrooms that they had at the supermarket. I've lined my baking sheet with a piece of unbleached parchment paper, and that'll keep the mushrooms from sticking to the bottom of the pan. Wash my hands off. All righty, there we are. I'm gonna put this into a 375 degree oven. I'm gonna cover them tightly with a little piece of foil, tent that foil over the top. That's gonna keep the moisture in the mushrooms and make it so they cook and don't get dry. Put it in the oven for about 30 minutes or so. I'm gonna take the top off and cook it for another, oh, 10 minutes to 25 minutes, depending on how thick your mushrooms are. I've got thick mushrooms tonight, so I think it's gonna take a little bit longer. Let it brown up on the top. It's all gonna be so crispy. It's all gonna be so yummy. Yay. And next up, my fabulous spinach and garbanzo beans. Let's get to it. Add some garbanzo beans. Ooh, caramelize the onions. Mm. Garbanzo beans. Now my walnut stuffed portobello mushrooms are sizzling in the oven. I can just smell them as the juices are getting released. And I've taken my lovely lemon cake out of the oven. I'm going to plate that up for you in just a minute. And then I've got my butternut squash all ready to go. And one more quick recipe here, because this is going to be such a beautiful, colorful plate. When you're cooking plant-based, vegan, vegetarian, really any kind of cooking you're doing, you want your plate to be very colorful. When you look at the plate, it makes it so inviting to eat. So that's what this next recipe is going to do. It's going to add that pop of green to the plate. So I'm starting off with an onion. We're going to saute it up and it's going to be the base of my spinach with garbanzo beans and caramelized onions. So I'm just going to slice the onions up here. I just love onions. They can make anything taste great. If you have trouble getting your family to eat spinach, this is something that you might try because a lot of people like garbanzo beans and they add a really great pop to this dish. All right. Okay, set that away. Gonna get my heat going. We're gonna start on a medium heat. I'm gonna add a little bit of extra virgin olive oil. Cover it. We're gonna let those onions sweat so they start giving us a little bit of moisture and then we're gonna caramelize them. While my onions are getting sizzling hot, I think it's time to unveil my lovely lemon cake. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna dress it out for you. First of all, I'm gonna flip it over. Oh yeah, there we go. <gasps> oh, that's beautiful. Wow, isn't that just so pretty? Just glistening, it's almost shining. And how I'm gonna dress it out is very, very simply. Just use a little bit of organic confectioner sugar. The vegan powdered variety is great. And I'm just gonna start off by putting a little bit of that sugar in my sieve. Ooh, yeah. I've got this on my grandmother's beautiful glass plate. It's gonna make it so pretty. I've got a couple of strawberries in the fridge that I'm going to dress it out with later. A little bit more of that lemon zest. You're going to see at the end of the show how fabulous this is going to look and how 
fabulous it tastes. So let me get my cake stand. There it is. All ready to be dressed, my lovely lemon cake. Now let me get back to cooking my onions. Mm-mm. Oh, those onions smell good. Can you smell them yet? I know you can see that steam rising, and that's how we know that they're really starting to cook up. Oh, yeah. See how they're starting to get just a little bit of color? Now, right now, we're going to help them out just a little bit. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to add one teaspoon of tamari. You can hear that sizzle right away. And that's going to start to give them a nice golden color. We can really smell that tamari, starting them towards caramelization. Now, if you're kind of in a rush, you're making a quick dinner for your neighbors tonight. Let's face it, you do want to speed up the process. I just add half a teaspoon of brown sugar and sprinkle that right over the top. It's going to make those onions immediately start to caramelize. Now I had it on medium-low. I'm turning back up to a medium heat. Look at how beautiful that is. If they do get a little bit dry at this point, you can add a little bit of vegetable broth or just a little bit of plain old water. I'm going to add a little more tamari to that. About another half teaspoon or so. Oh yeah, that's it. There we go. Woo! So we don't need salt in this dish because tamari is very salty tasting. Tamari infuses some nice flavor, some nice depth into your plant-based cooking. And it really adds layers and layers of good taste. So that's it. I'm going to let this cook up for about three more minutes, and then I'm going to add my fabulous spinach. Well, while the dinner is cooking, I'd like to share my green entertaining tip of the day. You know, we're often tempted to use paper napkins, but cloth napkins are really the more eco-friendly option. You can pick up cloth napkins in a vintage store or a flea market. You can reuse them for years and years and years. Just throw them in the washer, hang them to dry, fold them, and they're ready to go for your next party. So the next time you're entertaining, think about using cloth napkins. That's a great way to reuse, repurpose, and recycle. Now let's get back to cooking. Mmm! Those are just perfect. All caramely, all browned, all golden, and they're ready for the spinach. I have cleaned and prepped two big bunches of spinach. You don't want to use the baby spinach. It's a little bit too delicate. You want to get the regular old spinach. I'm just going to add it right in there. Now I know it looks like a lot. So you're just going to pile it all right on there. And make sure your pan is at a medium low heat at this point. Uh, to give it a little pizzazz, about a quarter teaspoon of crushed red pepper. And a little bit of vegetable broth. You can also use water. Just about a tablespoon is going to go in the bottom of that. Don't put too much or it's just going to get way too runny. Now take your pan lid. Press it down. And we're going to let that kind of steam cook for about two minutes. Then we're going to add our garbanzo beans. Then we're going to be ready to plate everything up. But while this is cooking, let's take a peek at our portobello mushrooms. Let's see how they're coming along because I can really smell them now. What you want to do at this point is kind of poke a fork into the portobello mushrooms and make sure that they're really getting nice and tender. And if you can see that, yes, they are. Perfect. I'm going to put them back in the oven, and the walnuts are really going to start to crisp up on top, and then the tender mushrooms underneath. And when you take a bite, you get a little crispy crunch, you get a little bit of that meaty taste from the mushroom. It's really, really delicious. We're going to put them back in here from anywhere between 15 to 20 minutes. Just keep an eye on them so they don't burn. But getting nice and brown around the edges is really just what you want. Look at that. Isn't that nice? This is looking just like we want it to look. Some of the spinach is still raw. Some of it is starting to cook up. And right now I'm going to add about three quarters of a can of garbanzo beans. That looks like about enough. Just a touch more tamari. And it's one teaspoon of veggie broth. Give it a little toss. Oh yeah, look at that. 
And basically all we're going to do is we're going to put the top back on and we're going to just cook this for another three to four minutes until those garbanzos cook through. It's now time to taste it. Yummy, yum, yum. Look at my beautiful meal. And I know all my friends are really going to enjoy this supper. Mm -mm -mm. Nice and crispy on top. It's really, really tender underneath. Take a look at that. Wowie zowie. That mushroom just got infused with that tamari, so it's really, really tasty. And then that crispy, crusty stuffing on top. That is so good. My roasted butternut squash with the garlic. You want to get a little piece of garlic in every bite. That butternut squash is so sweet, it's almost like you put candy or sugar on it. And then that browned and crusty garlic with it, just a great, great flavor. I just love it. Now my beautiful spinach. That is so delightful. Those garbanzo beans get nice and soft, add a nice little texture. Those caramelized onions are just so sweet. If you have someone that you're trying to get to eat spinach, try this dish. It is really so tasty. Now, my lovely lemon cake. And it truly is lemony and lovely. I'm gonna just cut myself a beautiful piece. Not too big. You can always have a second piece, right? I'm going to serve it with a few little of these strawberries on the side and then garnish it just with a little bit more of this beautiful lemon zest already. Mm. Nice and light. That is out of this world. So moist on the inside, that little crispy crust, that confection of sugar on the top, and that beautiful lemon zest. So quick to make, too. I know you're going to love it. I'd like to thank you so much for joining me today. I've had such a fun time preparing all of my jazzy vegetarian recipes for you. And I hope that when your neighbors come over for dinner, you're going to consider preparing these recipe winners that they're all going to love. So until next time, be happy, be healthy, and be well from the Jazzy Vegetarian. Visit our website at jazzyvegetarian.com to connect with Laura, see videos, find your favorite recipes, and more. Follow Laura on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Laura Theodore's Jazzy Vegetarian Classics features recipes from this series, and it's available for $26.95. Jazzy Vegetarian, a collection of favorite recipes, is available for $24.95. A set of both cookbooks is available for $44.95. For information or to order, visit jazzyvegetarian.com. Organic love 100% natural Yes it is now Organic love I've got no additives Or no preservatives It's real intuitive It's downright primitive Organic love Organic love Is 100% natural Yes it is now 